Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Nathan, it's Roll Masters. So maybe you got the new Roblox S6 Max V or the S4 Max and you're trying to figure out how in the world do I do the mapping process? Can I do a single level? How do I do a multi-level? Well, in this video, I'll explain all the details about the mapping process. Roblox did provide a new update to both these Roblox backrooms to have the latest mapping software. So it kind of is a little bit different from the previous software. So that's something to consider. But the mapping itself is pretty similar and we'll go over the details right now. Now, when you first get your Roblox uh, out of the box, you will have to pair up with the uh, smartphone. It does support the iPhone and Android. Uh, one thing to remember is make sure you're on a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. I don't believe that the Roblox supports the 5 GHz, so that's just something to consider. And you do have to have the robot paired up to do the mapping process. So just grab your robot, and also you need your docking station and your power cable. That's it for the mapping. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Also, let's go and uh, move the S6 Max V out of the way for now. So once you get the robot out of the box, just go ahead and hold down the power button for about 3 seconds until you see a white indicator. Now the robot will boot up and it takes about a minute to boot up and you will hear a boot up sound. Very nice tap sound. Okay, so now we just got a docking station. Go ahead and uh, find a nice open location. Don't worry if you haven't found an ideal location. You can physically move the docking station once you save the map, and the robot will update its docking station location. Okay, let's go and uh, get everything plugged in. And this nice little power indicator let you know that this outlet works. Next, I do recommend having this robot back and fully charged. Uh, one thing to remember is if you have a larger floor plan, it may require all its juice to completely map out your entire floor plan. Okay, now the robot's charging. We'll let that sit for about an hour or so. And let's go and uh, jump into the app here. Okay, so for this demonstration, I am going to use the Roblox app, but you can use the VHome app. The mapping is very similar, but one thing to remember is for the Roblox app, you do get the latest mapping features like the four level mapping. Also, with the Roblox app, you do get the live camera streaming that the Roblox S6 Max V offers. Let's go and jump into the Roblox app. So you can see I have both the S4 Max and S6 Max V paired up, but I'm going to use the S4 Max for this demonstration. Now, if you got the robot back and fresh out of the box, you should have a no map found. So there shouldn't be any maps. Also, if you cleared out a map, it should just be a blank map. So in the upper right hand corner are three little dots. This is very important that we set up the robot back and prior to creating your first map. So let's go to manage maps. And this is the most important feature is the map saving. Make sure that's enabled. Unfortunately, I believe it's disabled by default. So it's very important to make sure that's enabled or you won't be able to save any maps. Also, with the new software update, there's a new home icon. Now, depending on what type of home you have, a single level or multi-level, make sure you select that accordingly because it could mess it up. Uh, so, for my instance, I have a multi-level house, so I'm going to select multi-level. Now, a new feature is the being able to save different maps and being able to switch between them. So, you have the option to restore the map. You can also delete the map. This is the same thing as on the previous software updates, but with the previous software updates, you can uh, select between the maps. The world backing would automatically select for you. Also, you can only save two plus the current map. But for this new update, you can save up to four maps. So also the mapping process is a lot easier. So all I have to do is select create new map, the little plus icon. And now it gives you some helpful hints. Make sure all the doors are open for all the rooms. Unfortunately, if you create a map and save it, you can't add rooms later on. You do have to create a new map. That's just something to consider. Also, make sure you clear up your floors from like cables and any obstacles so the robot backup doesn't get hung up. And lastly, do not pick up or move the robot because if you do, it could mess up your mapping. The robot backup does have to start from the docking station and end from the docking station. Alright, let's go ahead and select create and it should start the mapping process. Okay, so the world vacuum will start out with the perimeter sweep and then fill in that perimeter with the back and forth cleaning pattern. As it's going along, you'll see that the map is being created in real time. I'll go ahead and speed up the footage so you can see the world vacuum in action and how it creates a map. So how the mapping process works, this is commonly found on most ladder-based world vacuums is it starts out with the perimeter sweep first, then it fills in that 
perimeter with a back and forth cleaning pad. Now don't worry if you find that the navigation is not optimized, as still will back and loan its environment, it will optimize its cleaning pad on the next time around. So I have tested a lot of different world of vacuums from different manufacturers with different technologies. There's counter base, gyro base, and lighter base. I have found that lighter base world of vacuums provide the best accuracy and resolution in terms of map quality. Also, I found out they're most accurate in terms of like room select and keep out zones. They tend to be able to go accurately within the selected uh, keep out zone that the user does on the map. Now, the only downside is you notice that glass panel in the top left corner. Well, you can see on the map they actually expanded the room even though the robot vacuum can't physically get there. So unfortunately, laser systems can't see clear objects so they may uh, bump into them or expand the map. Okay, so it looks like the S4 Max is almost done. So once it's done, it's going to announce that it's returning back to its docking station. And once it's returned back to its docking station, we'll be able to edit the map. Charging. Okay, so that's the most important part is letting the robot go back to its docking station. So look at the map here that I created. Let's go to the edit map. You do have the no-go zones and edit room. So within the edit room, I can actually name the actual area. So let's just call it uh, main level here. So you select the area and do custom, I'll call it uh, main level. Now I also could divide up this area. Let's go ahead and jump back into here. We'll just divide up the two areas, so select the area again. And click the OK. And lastly, if I want to do a keep out zone, I can also do that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. So here's the invisible wall, so I can actually block it off, or I can do the uh, no-go zone and create rectangles or squares. There we go. How in the world do I switch between the maps? Uh, there's two methods now. You can do the manual method, which you go to manage maps, and you can actually just click uh, restore between the two maps. You can have to, up to four different maps. Or the method I like is you actually can physically move the robot to the location, and a robot will update its map in real time. You don't have to do anything. And one thing that's nice is you don't have to take the docking station, just take the robot. Let me demonstrate that now. Just grab your robot, press the clean button, and you're good to go. Starting to clean. So with this new software update, it really makes it user friendly because you can save up to four floor plans, also you can select between the maps you want to save. And lastly, because you can physically move the robot to the different floor plans without having to load the map manually on the app, it really takes out the guesswork of making sure that the correct map is loaded on. And if I haven't mentioned this before, don't worry about the docking station position. The robot vacuum can also update its docking station if you find that it's not in the ideal location. So this also applies to the room select. So all you have to do is just select the correct map you want and then you just basically select the room. Make sure the row of vacuum is on the correct level and you just press the clean button and the row of vacuum will take care of it. But for this example, I just press the clean button and you can see that the row of vacuum updated the map that we created in this video. Well, what do you guys think? Was that helpful? If you have any additional questions, feel free to comment down below or check out www.robottechreviews.com. That's my personal website. I do have a form down there and I will get back to you on that as well. Okay, so you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Stay tuned. I got a lot of great products down the pipeline. All right, see you later.